Welcome to a new video, you guys. Today, we're actually getting a little glimpse into the future. It's really exciting. I've just seen a brand new concept car, which I want to share with you guys. Massive thanks to the Renault Group for sharing their brand new concept car, the Renault Morphos. Right, so let's have a little walk around because there are many, many things we need to talk about with this car. As you can tell, first of all, it's absolutely gorgeous. This is a sport SUV from the future. We're talking around 2025, and this car actually has technology which could be used uh, much sooner than that. It's very, very pretty, as you can tell, and there are loads of design details, like in the lights. They are absolutely gorgeous. The way they've been able to use what you're seeing visually to make the car look awesome, but also whilst keeping it very aerodynamically efficient. So back here, you have all of these little openings and slats, which make the car look extremely sporty. Now, right here is an interesting part we're going to talk about in a little bit, the party trick of this car. But before we talk about that, we just come right under to these incredible rims. I had never seen rims of this design before, let alone on a sports SUV of this type. They are designed to filter the air through to make the car really nicely aerodynamic. So of course, this car, being from the future, is fully electric. So this car actually in city mode has 400 kilometer range, which is an ample amount for you to drive around and do all of your city driving, everything you need to do usually during the day. You can see around front, the design continues. They're using, using light details to really amplify the design of the car. There's no front grille, of course, this being fully electric because you don't need the radiators to cool the car down as much. That also allows you to have a lot more space because naturally a battery takes up a lot less space than an internal combustion engine, which means you can use the interior space a lot more, but you can also make the car a lot lower. I'm not a particularly tall guy, yet I am still higher than this car, and with it being an SUV, that's really impressive. But this car has what we call the travel mode, and that is the party piece of this car. So you've got a car that's 4 meters 40 long, but then all of a sudden, as you can see around front there, just at the click of a button, in the front and the back, the car literally extends, and you can even see the tire moving. The car becomes 40 centimeters longer, so we're now talking 4 meters 80, and the battery capacity goes from 40 kilowatts to 90 kilowatts, and the extended drive means that you can do 700 kilometers of range, which is why this is called the travel mode. I've never seen any features like this on the car. I discovered it just before this, and it blows my mind. The fact that you can have a car which literally changes in size and allows it to go further, but also whilst keeping the beautiful design and allowing it to still be aerodynamically efficient is just mind-blowing. Things actually get really exciting when you go inside of this car as well. So as I get close to it, the car, you can see it here, gets super excited. And then you just have to do a little movement and the doors open in a Rolls-Royce fashion. So you've got the front door which opens normally, but then the rear door you're going to see opens in a very Rolls way. And you don't actually have a pillar in the middle. Now we're actually lucky enough to ask some questions to the director of concept cars because he is an expert in the development of all concept cars, but specifically this one as well. And there were some questions I really wanted to ask him and he has better answers than I do. So we're gonna to cut to those real quick. On this concept car Morphos, we really tried to translate this idea of being alive. For this, we used many uh, types of fields of inspiration. The first one was, of course, in terms of shape, the animality that we can find in some, in some vocabulary of shapes. The second one was around the idea of being like a plane, like something that is super aerodynamic. The other one was clearly uh, around the idea of being electrical. And for this, we used all the devices that we can find in the habitat today. And the last one, which was very important for us, is a connection with the history of art, and especially the relationship we had with uh, Valzarelli and his work on the kinetic art in the 70s. Integrating the artificial intelligence in the car was very interesting for us in this concept car, because it was the opportunity to actually see how the car can adapt to the user, and especially on the screens. For instance, we used in our living screen the artificial intelligence in a way to optimize the treat during the city life. And during the travel life, we used it as an opportunity. You could imagine that the system proposes you 
to go away from the main trip you were doing to actually uh, have the opportunity to go for climbing. We actually used through this concept car the opportunity to talk about the price of cars in the future, and especially electric cars where actually the batteries make the price of the car. So we could imagine that by using only half of what you, you expect in a, in a car that can go for long travel, you would have actually the opportunity to buy only the half of this, which is actually 80% of your daily use. So Morphos is definitely a big thinking around the idea of using what you need when you need. And the fact that it's getting longer is not only uh, to actually get the possibility to go further, it's also the possibility to get more space inside. So of course, it's not nothing. And if you think that behind this is the possibility to actually reduce the car, is a real deep thinking around the idea of being ecologic in the future by using only what you need. For the designers on Morphos, what was very interesting, they could go further, they could go beyond the idea of ecosystem and how the car is a part of an ecosystem, which is very smart. But it could also play with the opportunity to create a very magical transformation. Why well, awesome to hear from Francois then, and now you're probably wondering who is sat right next to me. This is Romain, a friend of mine. We've been friends for many, many years. He also runs a YouTube channel called Tech News and Test, which is actually the perfect kind of channel to have for this car, seeing as it's from the future and we have a lot of gadgets. And he was here filming as well, so I thought I would just check in now that we've spoken to Francois, see what Romain also thinks of this car. What are your thoughts now that you've seen and you've sat in the Renault Morphos? Yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like you didn't understand me. <laughs> no, for me, it's not like just a car. It's like when you take an airplane just to travel, you have the sharing mode and some different spec just yeah. to share the music, the maps, uh, the, yeah, the spec of the car. And you're not here just to to ride. Yeah, you're here to actually have the experience and it's a car that's made to travel in and also share, not only in what you share inside, because you've got a position of a seat where you can share a lot with the person in front of you, the seat actually spins around in travel mode so that you can communicate with the other passengers when you're sat on the mag, but also literally made for sharing because the battery that you're gonna use for the travel mode can actually be used by other people while you're not taking part in it. And while you're not using it, the battery can be put at what's called a Renault platform and be used to fuel electric bikes or do anything like that that you need. Um, so it's really, really a car that's made to be used by yourself, yeah. but also shared with others. So as soon as you want to drive your 700 kilometers and you need the extended range, you just arrive at a Renault platform, the spare 50 kilowatt battery gets put in, and then you can go from there. But it's awesome, and as you said, there's all the technology inside and they've used the space magnificently. So you don't need a transmission arm anymore yeah. because you don't have an internal combustion engine. So they've used this space for things for like screens where we could actually play a game. But for me, my yeah. favorite spec, it's the noise cancelling with the seats. Yes. If you have a child at yeah, the front yeah, yeah. and if we would like just to um, sleep, yeah. you can hear uh, alone, yeah, 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 yeah. Hear alone right, your awesome. contents, your personal contents. So yeah, it's... It's so sick because the speakers are actually in the back of the seat here, developed by Harman and Cardin as well, so you know they're going to be quality. Armand Cardin. In <laughs> French. <laughs> Guys, comment below what you thought of his accent. I thought it was, it was good fun. But no, it is awesome to see the interior design, which just feels very airy, very spacious, and it does feel like a car that is from the future. This car also has level three autonomy driving. So there are five levels that you can have. This one has level three. And to talk about that a bit more, I'm actually going to take the driver's seat. So. I'm now in the driver's seat, and this is where things get even more interesting. So when you come in, first of all, you've got your iPhone, and you just place it here, which is actually hard wood, but it changes and morphs and actually absorbs the iPhone so that it uses artificial intelligence to suck out all of the information from your iPhone and learn about you, what you like, what music you like. And the car actually uses this artificial intelligence panel right here to become more friendly towards you and make the experience even nicer. Now, currently we are in travel mode, as you know. So this is effectively how I would be. I'd be sat here with my level three autonomy going. Level three means I'm not allowed to have an iPad or a phone or anything in front of me. I still need to have my eyes on the road. Now that is actually made really easy right here because I don't have a dashboard. I don't have anything in front of me. All I've got is this steering wheel. 
which has a little screen where I'll just have the important information that I need. This is actually kind of fun for me because I had a design technology class back in the International Baccalaureate and I designed a steering wheel with an iPad in the middle. So this is bringing back memories for me and clearly maybe Renault somehow got in touch with that idea, but uh, it's really cool to see that. And it allows you also in the future, because there will be screens all over the place, to have a detox from screens and be able to take in what's going on around you, take in uh, you know, the scenery that's driving by. So that's a really nice thought to allow you to be in such a modern environment but not be too sucked in by constantly having to look at screens. But if you want to, you can press this button right here, open, close, and the whole front dash opens up with this kind of like crocodile mouth look and you have this beautiful L-shaped design dashboard, you'll see what I mean by L-shaped design, that comes out so that you can have plenty more information. So this is kind of what you'd have during city driving, or if you choose to, during travel driving as well. It unfolds itself, and there's the L-shaped design I was mentioning earlier. You have a combination of five different screens here where you can get all sorts of information. So it will give you different route plans, for example. Do you want to take the scenic long route, or do you want to take the highway quick route? You have your range, you have the speed you're going at, anything you need. And it's so cool that you can just choose whether you want it out there in front of you or whether you want to detox yourself and actually be able to just enjoy the drive and enjoy the company of the people around you. So it's really nice, it's a really subtle change, but I love how they're taking that into, into thought and allowing you to drive in the best way you see fit. It all feels very modern, of course. You've got glass all around you, it's very airy. You've got cameras, which are your rear view cameras, all over the place, and it just allows you to have what feels like it would be a really, really nice experience. And obviously, no noise, because it's electric as well. But I mean, that pretty much covers the interior. You could talk about it for ages, but there's so much technology packed into such a refined design. And like we say, you know, beauty is in simplicity. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that walk around of the Renault Mofos. It's a different kind of video for me, but it was really, really cool to have a proper look around a car like this. I also did a French video, so if you speak French and you want to see my initial reaction, I'd never seen the car before, we included that in the video on my French channel, which will be linked down below. But obviously a massive thank you to the Renault Group for hosting me and allowing me to see this car and share it with you guys. It is always an absolute pleasure, guys. Let me know what you thought of this video, and I'll be seeing you again. Take care, bye-bye.